Bonjour, hola, hello, namaste. Thank you so much everyone for joining us at the webinar today. We are going to talk about the issue that has brought the entire world to a standstill, COVID-19. My colleague Ayan, who is going to lead this webinar, is going to talk in depth about how environment has an impact on the spread of coronavirus. He'll also emphasize on how OISOM offerings and solutions can play a major role in limiting the spread of the virus. Without taking a lot of time, I'd like to take this, I would like Ayan to take this over and talk to and talk to us, talk to us about it and lead the conversation. Over to you, Ayan. Thank you, Jainam. So welcome guys to this webinar. I'm your presenter today. My name is uh, Ayan Karmakar and I come from a core environment engineering background. So today's webinar is focused upon sensor-based air monitoring and how this technology can be used in indicating the spread of COVID-19. Just a few instructions before we start for any questions, feel free to write them in our chat box. We'll try and answer them as the session uh, goes. And in case if there are some questions which are left out, we'll try to address it at the end or you can always send an email to us uh, at the end of this webinar. Um, Let's begin this uh, webinar with a little bit about uh, OISOM. I know most of our audience are our allies and we have known each other. However, for the ones who are joining with us for the first time, I wish to spare a few minutes to make them aware about our products and solutions. So what is OISOM? OISOM is an environmental IoT company offering data-driven environmental solutions for better decision making. Now using our sensor-based hardware, we monitor various environmental parameters related to air quality, noise, odor, weather, and radiation. We have a global presence in across 10 global countries like the UK, Japan, Turkey, Argentina, India, of course, and Australia. Our vision is to empower industries with data-driven solutions for better decision-making while keeping environment at our core, and we aim to implement our environmental IoT solutions to 50 major cities by the end of 2020. We are an ISO 9001 and 14001 certified company. We are also part of the Make in India campaign as our products are manufactured at our Ahmedabad facility that is in Gujarat. Our products have certifications from C, FCC, ROHS, PTCRB and SAS. The question that comes up is why are we concerned about environment and air quality? Well, as a shocking fact, pollution is the fifth largest killer responsible for more than 4.2 million deaths worldwide. Of course, this data is, the, is of the pre-COVID-19 era. So let's focus on that for some time. And we find out that 1.2 million deaths are in India itself. The nine out of 10 people breathe polluted air, which reduces four years from their lifespan. Now, you won't believe, but air pollution kills three times more people than AIDS, TB and malaria combined. Now, my question is, what is stopping us to you know, get deeper into the problem and solve it? I would say data. So data is the key to understand any complex problem. And today, there's a huge data vacuum when it comes to environmental data, because present solutions are either expensive, complicated, or maybe labor intensive. So we developed a simple, cost-effective, and highly scalable solution for environmental data monitoring and analytics. The system is capable to monitor more than 30 different parameters, and the data is transmitted to our data analytics platform. Now, these 30 parameters are mainly segmented into dust, gases, odorants, noise, radiation, and weather. The data platform has features like actionable alerts, insightful reports and predictive analytics. These alerts can be integrated to automate various industrial systems. Further, this data can be published on an LED display, TV or a web platform. Now our sensor-based continuous ambient air quality monitoring systems can measure more than 30 parameters as we just saw. But what are these parameters? Let me take you a little bit in the depth. Dust particulates like PM1, 2.5, 10, and 100 micron sizes. Gases like SOX, NOx, carbon monoxide, oxygen, ozone, carbon dioxide. Odorants like hydrogen sulfide, ammonia, chlorine, formaldehyde, VOCs, and mercaptans. Weather parameters like wind speed, wind direction, 
rainfall, fog, light intensity, temperature and humidity, noise levels and radiations like ultraviolet, infrared, alpha, beta and gamma radiations. Now, our gas sensors work on the principle of electrochemical sensing. So electrochemical sensors work by reacting to the target gas, generating an electrical output, which varies with the amount of target gas present. A few gaseous parameters work on the principle of NDI, that is non-dispersive infrared, where each constituent gas in a sample will absorb some infrared at a particular frequency. Most odorants are measured using PID sensors, where a photoionization detector is used to detect the positive and negative ions. The dust particulates are measured using the laser scattering principle. Also, our device is communication agnostic. So apart from GSM, Ethernet and Wi-Fi, our device can communicate using Modbus, LoRa and NV IoT protocols. I know this is a lot of information to have about our offering. So let me just ease you out with a short video, which is aimed to get better clarity. Here is a state-of-the-art environmental monitoring solution by Oifone. It's a compact, ultra-low-powered system which can work fully on solar power. It works continuously and sends various environmental data related to air pollution, odor, weather, noise and radiation. Its patent-pending e-breathing technology makes it highly accurate compared to industry standards. It can do complete gas analysis by monitoring pollutants like carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, sulfides, ozone, ammonia, hydrocarbons, and many more. It counts every single particle present in the air sample using a highly accurate laser beam. It is capable of monitoring particulates of various sizes, ranging from 1 micron to 100 microns. A downward-facing Class 1 noise sensor is ideally positioned to capture environmental noise up to 140 decibels from various sources. As you can observe, the top-mounted pyranometer does solar radiation analysis by diffracting the light rays into UV, IR and visible light spectrums. Most of the pollutants are invisible, but through systematic data collection, they can be made visible. Boisome is committed to decipher hyperlocal environmental data and redefine natural resources, which are highly essential for our existence on Earth. So I get you have got an idea about our scalable, durable and accurate offerings. But what sets us apart and you know puts us ahead in the market, you may ask. Now our products are empowered with salient features like real-time data transfer and all weatherproof enclosure with IP63 certification, theft resistance, tamper or vandalism proof, fully compatible with uh, solar power, more than eight different methods of communication and a battery backup which lasts more than 72 hours. Our flagship products are ambient air pollution monitoring system, that is Polytron, ambient odor analyzer, that's Odosense, ambient dust monitor, that's Dustroy, and automatic weather station, that's WeatherCom. They're all connected to our OISOM IoT data platform. And this data is available in the form of data visualization, analytics, and environmental modeling using software platform. In a span of just four years, we are present in more than 300 locations, monitoring the data that affects over 10 million people in around 10 global cities and across 10 countries. We are promoting six types of solutions using all the hardware and software products that we explain. We have implemented solutions for several applications, but at the moment, we are primarily promoting these six solutions. The three are in the urban category, which are related to smart city, smart campuses, airports, and road safety and three are in the industrial category, which are related to dust suppression, solid waste, and wastewater treatment. Now, our partner-first approach makes the application either B2B2B and B2B2G. So now that I've shared a little about OISOM, let's get to the fact and address the elephant in the room. Yes, the deadly coronavirus. By now, I'm assuming you have all got an idea of what all we uh, offer and how our, the sensor-based technology can be used for monitoring environmental conditions. So when it comes to monitoring air pollution, in the current scenario, there have been an interesting observation regarding the COVID-19 spread. Before proceeding to all those correlations, let us understand that what we know so far about this deadly virus. We all have been following news related to the COVID-19 and how it has impacted our daily lives. 
Now, be it the mortality rate, the lack of testing facilities, or the effects of the lockdown on the economy, I guess we all are well informed about this various sources. But not all is gloomy when it comes to the after effects of this pandemic. A few positives have also surfaced during these hard times. A noticeable impact in the air pollution has been observed by scientists across the world. So, as mentioned in the introductory slides, you may recall the number of people dying due to poor air quality, right? Now, as a blessing in disguise, the COVID-19 containment strategies involve travel bans and mass gatherings, resulting into the reduction of air pollution, you now eventually reducing the number of deaths. Let me give you an example. China alone has found to have saved around 77,000 lives as a result of this. The size of the coronavirus is 0.1 microns which is way less than the detection of particulate matters, which are in the form of say PM1, PM2.5 or PM10. So this indicates the virus can easily penetrate through the, through the mask used to contain PM2.5 in the air. Now imagine if the coronavirus would have been airborne, what kind of catastrophic damage it would have created? Hold your imagination. Let's give it some time. And before you come to a judgment, let us discuss a few more findings about the virus. The COVID-19 spreads mainly by droplets produced as a result of coughing or sneezing of a COVID-19 infected person. Now, this can happen in two ways, a direct close contact and an indirect contact. The incubation period of COVID-19 is somewhere between 1 to 14 days. And some people with the infection but without any serious symptoms can also spread the disease. We also know the prevention techniques which talks of social distancing and ensuring you do take care of your personal hygiene. And the statistics show a very concerning picture. The mortality rate is quite high and it stands at 10% at world level and somewhere around 3 to 4% for India. The most affected country as far as the number of cases is concerned is the US. And today the world has seen more than 4 million cases with around 3 lakh deaths. Of course, the data might vary with as the days go by. So all in all, this is a grave situation. And a lot of studies have happened across the world and scientists have enlightened us with their findings like a couple of them here uh, Leonardo Setti from University of Bologna Italy he has found out a, a really good correlation where he says that in conditions of atmospheric stability and high concentration of PM the COVID uh, uh, virus would create clusters with outdoor PM another study in Harvard University has a very nice finding which states that if Manhattan had lowered its average particulate matter level by just single unit, which in this case is one microgram per cubic meter over past 20 years, the level of the deaths or the number of deaths would have been lesser by 248. So this in itself is a very good correlation which states our findings for this webinar. A couple of uh, uh, organizations have worked upon to identify the spread of this virus. So one of them is this NHK World. Uh, in from Japan. So they have used laser beams and high sensitivity cameras to detect this 0.1 micron of detection. There are micro droplets as you see the person in the picture who's sneezing and they are trying to capture this through these high sensitive cameras and they are trying to identify how the small and the light particles drift through the air. So this can even be when you're talking to someone apart from say coughing or sneezing and they have taken this whole activity of identifying the aerosols to a different level. They have put around 10 people in a confined area and have you know, drawn some simulations for the movements of uh, micro droplets. So as you see, some of the smaller particles would stay in the air, whereas the larger particles will drop down immediately uh, on the floor. So micro droplets which stay in the air can be compared with the timer which is shown uh, in, the, in the study. So as you see, within just a few seconds, the larger particles have you know, settled down, which are in the form of the yellow and the green uh, colors, which, uh, which are the higher sized particles. Whereas during, due, due to the wind circulation uh, amongst this uh, confined area, the lighter particles stay inside. And even the study has gone for more than around 20 minutes where they stay indefinitely in the air. So what does all this say? You know, the human expired aerosol is present, which is really, really shocking for all of us. So what are these human expired aerosols? They're in the form of droplets that resulted from human activities like coughing, breathing, or even talking. 
Now, there have been studies which have suggested that such aerosols are found in the hospitals where the COVID-19 patients are admitted. So these aerosols remain on the surfaces for hours and before they finally fall on the floor, they can be you know, easily transmitted through these surfaces. Now, heavier aerosols can take less time to deposit on the floor, just as we saw in, a, in the previous simulation. A study which has found that particles with diameter from one to three microns were suspended in the air for almost indefinitely, whereas heavier particles like 100 microns fell on the floor in just 10 seconds. Now, at this moment, I know there's a lot of information that we are sharing. So in case if you have any questions, you are free to please put it across in the chat box. My team is already there to help you out with the answers for any uh, any doubts that you have till now. So moving ahead, let's just see how the human expired aerosol, which we were discussing, what, it, what happens if you know it meets the particulate matter. Now, here we see, we have seen this slide where we have talked about the sizes of uh, the, the COVID-19 virus and uh, the PM2.5 and PM10. So what happens if these particles get deposited on the, the PM2.5 or the PM10 particles? So this gives a very grave situation and gives us a thought that, you know, how this particle can then spread in the air. At this point, let's have a quick poll about how your understanding has been so far about the particulate matters. I'll take a few seconds off to uh, let you guys uh, fill in the poll. Okay. So moving ahead with our findings with the human expired aerosols and the particulate matter, there have been some correlations uh, which have been established in the US between the long-term exposure and mortality rates. So just as the case uh, in Harvard University where they have studied the increase in the PM2 point values by just one microgram per cubic meter has led to 15% increase in the deaths. So we just discussed the death rate and it's just simple math mathematics to gauge what could be the effect. Also, Italian scientists have found out that the correlation between high mortality rates and the pollution hotspots, that can be taken as a cofactor. Some Italian students have correlated PM10 and its role in the whole spread of uh, these aerosols. A London-based study also talks about the exposure to NO2 and ozone for a long term, which has led to persistent inflammatory damage and the increase the risk of this virus infection. Because this virus attacks your respiratory tract. Now, let me just go back a few minutes where we're talking about the imagination. And I would now ask you to, you know, unhold that thing and all these facts, imagine how the whole spread would be when the aerosols are deposited on the uh, particulate matters and then it can spread in the air. There are a lot of research articles which claim all these links. The findings may be preliminary, but definitely leaves us the question of this detrimental impact. Now, all this said, you may ask that how can we track or identify these hotspots? Now, is there a mechanism which helps us to take these preventive actions? To answer this, I would seek your prime attention for the next few minutes. Now, at this moment, I again repeat, in case of any questions, feel free to put it across in the chat box. Now, this is the environmental AI that we have developed, which is a street by street pollution mapping and source detection platform for cities. Now, map is always a very good medium to understand a region-specific spread of any map, be it your air pollution or virus. Here, we have combined the data of the detected cases of the COVID-19 and superimposed it over a pollution heat map. This, when further correlated with the upwind and downwind data, helps understand a possible spread over a specific region. In this case, a hotspot in a city. Now, let me give you a little brief on how we use this techn technology for our air monitoring network. We place our air monitoring network in the city and on the top of the real-time pollution data, we also integrate the secondary data sources like satellite, meteorological data, traffic data, and pollution sources are inventory. Thereafter, we perform a dispersion modeling at a city scale every single hour. Now, the heat map shown is of Delhi where 6.5 lakh data points are predicted every single hour and a higher resolution, resolution that is around 100 by 100 meters, a pollution map is produced real-time. 
Now, normally such kind of maps are an output of source apportionment studies, which uses the historical data. Now, but this environmental AI is a real time solution, which ensures red flagging and decisive actions make very much efficient. We are talking about endless possibilities with such executions. Now, all this is possible when there is a robust network to monitor the pollutants. Let me walk you through a few of our product offerings, which will ensure the same uh, pollutron, has, uh, which will ensure this. So our pollutron has the capability of measuring particulate matter that is PM10 and PM2.5. Also parameters like carbon monoxide, uh, nitric, di nit uh, nitric oxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide and ozone are also measured. In addition to this, light intensity, noise and weather parameters are also monitored by pollutron. Let's quickly have a look at the different variants that we have and the working principle on which these devices work. Now, light is the basic version where PM2.5 and 10, along with temperature, humidity, noise, light intensity, and UV are measured, along with the gases like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. This kind of version is recommended for general research purposes. The smart version, which includes all the AQI measuring gases, concerning the ambient air quality and is recommended for extensive purposes like city monitoring. Whereas the pro version indicates uh, parameters related to critical applications like PM1 and H2S and it's suggested for usage in critical applications. Now, all the versions have options for adding accessories to monitor weather conditions and make the whole uh, application a holistic one. So today smart city has become the core of all urban development. Ozone's pollutron has been monitoring data of almost 11 such smart cities. Besides this, the pollutron has also been used for monitoring data of campuses to improve the overall quality of the air the residents breathe. So some critical applications like roadside and tunnel monitoring have also surfaced with the availability of such low-cost pollution monitors. Even airports have had initiatives for monitoring emissions by airplanes and their effects on the travelers. Our next offering uh, is Destroid, so which is about monitoring dust particulates in the air. You know, we all must have seen this dust laden activities going around us, especially in a country like India, where dust is a pertinent issue. Activities such as mining and construction lead to the spike in concentration of particulates in the air. Now, Ozone's ambient dust profiler measures the concentration of dust particles and work on an active sampling method using highly accurate laser beam. Also, for the measurement of particulate matter, we dehumidify the sample to nullify the effect of humidity on the measurement. So just like pollutron, there are variants in destroy where they are defined as for the application. The pro version is specifically designed for highly critical applications like industries, mining and construction, whereas the light version is ideal for urban monitoring. Like others, wind speed and direction along with noise monitoring is offered as an optional accessory to get a better idea about the data and the surrounding. Threshold limits can be set for conducting construction and mining activities and destroyed becomes instrumental in governing such database decisions. Apart from known sources in construction and mines, quarries and seaports are also prone to heavy dust laden activities. Data gathered from destroyed can help automate mist cannon used for dust suppression. Even for seaports, Timely action can be taken by authorities to curb the dust influenced by loading and loading and other such harbor activities. Now, so far, we have understood the, the environmental AI, where we're talking about correlating the coronavirus spread and pollution hotspots. Then we talked about how we can do that using the offerings. But here is something that you know we have been working for making the making sense of the data. So it gives me immense pleasure to share with you guys about a development that we have been working for quite some time. With inclusion of a holistic view, we have come up with an index which provides actionable insights to the stakeholders. But despite Corona being a non airborne spread, its airborne effects through particulates need to be quantified. So we came up with the ACSI or the airborne COVID spread index, where we are considering parameters such as the concentration of particulate matters, wind speed and uh, direction, the detected COVID-19 positive cases and the historical air pollution data, which we saw in some of the researches where the long term exposure to certain level of uh, pollution might risk the virus infection multiple times. But saying this, we are open to collaborate with concerned people and research bodies to produce an airborne COVID spread index and help the stakeholders or the authorities 
with a robust index where that the data would make sense and further actions can be taken. Now we talked about how you know there is a correlation between the airborne particles as well as you know how the spread is there on the uh, particulate matters. But there are also some findings which are interesting on the water bodies. So there are some uh, areas where our central authority, the CPCB in India, has found out that how virus can spread through these sewage systems, and they have uh, made uh, made the operators of these plants aware about uh, how you should take precautions. Also, there have been minuscule traces which have been found in the Paris water uh, by the Paris water body, but these are in the non-potable systems. So the drinking water and all things are not yet; uh, they have not found any data there. The this is where we are talking about how the virus can be, you know, detected in these water bodies. They can be detected in the sewage treatment plants or the different treatment plants. Now, as we find traces of the virus in the sewer systems, it becomes an aid to identify any asymptomatic patients in the region. So, identifying such hotspots based on the data of the virus trace can be useful to increase testing frequency region-wise. Now, this is an area where we are talking that in case if you know that you know there are some asymptomatic patients uh, maybe in the region, but we won't be able to do that without the testing. So, such kind of uh, intelligent data which can be provided to the authorities by measuring the the level of uh, any traces in the virus from that region in the sewer system can help you understand and you know facilitate the medical teams to identify the cases accordingly. Here, I also now would uh, request you all to fill up our second poll, which will give us an idea about how you know uh, about this subject. I'll give you a few seconds to for you to fill this up. Great. So while we are talking about uh, the solutions that we have for the water treatment systems and uh, you know the odors that are associated with it, I would like to share some information about our product that is Odosin. So you, we all know that you know we seldom smell these odors in our surrounding and then fail to trace its source. Majorly, we tend to ignore that and we move on with our lives. And in the process, we fail to understand the gravity of the situation. So Ozone's odor monitoring solution, Odosin helps track harmful gases which are toxic and create an uncomfortable surrounding. Also, process improvements have surfaced as a novel application by qualifying such odorful gases. So, odosense is also classified based on the applications with a light version measuring gases such as ammonia and hydrogen sulfide and is well suited for applications pertaining to wastewater treatment plants. While the solid waste landfills may be equipped with the smart version and the most advanced version that is PRO, which also measures formaldehyde and chlorine is used for industrial applications. Again, measuring wind speed and direction is also offered as an option to assist in source tracking of odors. A major source of odor is from landfills. So today, when we pass from any such solid waste dump yards, we are pushed to discomfort as we smell various odors for a few seconds. Also, underperforming or non-performing sewage treatment plants and effluent treatment plants tend to release unwanted odors in the air, leading to harmful atmospheric conditions for the residents nearby. But this, when combined with the industrial odors, form a dangerous combination, sometimes leading to deaths. So, odor monitoring in these cases proved to be an excellent assessment and help us in taking corrective actions. So we have spoken about uh, the, the cases, the, the corona relation. Uh, we have talking about how we would, you know, uh, correlate such hotspots with the data of air, air pollution. But you know, these days, coronavirus is a hot topic, and it is understandable because of the short and the long-term impacts that it has. But this has led to forget some of the major issues which we have been concerned globally. So amongst them is climate change. You know, the Secretary General of the United Nations has said that a Worse enemy still prevails and efforts to curtail that need not be compromised at any given time. Yes, the evident climate change has affected millions and it will continue to do so unless we take some necessary and timely actions. Now, we have all seen that, you know, we have the capability to monitor the greenhouse gases like methane and carbon dioxide, which are responsible for the global warming. Now, in addition to this, 
Our offering also includes monitors to detect and possibly alarm any natural disasters. So a solution that is weathercom, where weather monitoring, which has become a crucial aspect to avoid these natural hazards and untimely weather calamities. So our plug and play system, uh, which is the weather, weather monitoring solution, becomes an ideal choice for comprehensive meteorological monitoring due to its robust build, solar compatibility and advanced analytics. We, the variants are smart, which is specially designed for agricultural monitoring where we can have we have the capability to measure the soil humidity along with rainfall and which not only helps in efficient farming but also triggers uh, database signals for smart irrigation for safety applications like road safety including visibility the pro version turns out to be an ideal selection the data from weathercom will be helpful to take preventive actions during calamities as well as forecasting events Along with precision, precision agriculture, it will help in taking data-driven decision to save the crops. Also, visibility becomes a key these days when it comes to road accidents. As we saw, road accidents that rank sixth in the list of factors causing deaths, setting up preventive actions like maybe dynamic speed limits or cautioning fellow drivers, this can be done using the weather comms data. So, so far we have seen how our hardware uh, options we have, how hardware offerings that can, you know, be used in several applications. So let's just focus some time on the software platform, which will actually be very a key to understand and visualize the data. So our data viewing platform, which is fully featured, is developed in-house. Now, in addition to a standard dashboard view, the cloud-based application that is Terminal, which is the custom name of our platform, is loaded with modules like analytics, automated reports, cluster view, smart notification, heat maps, widgets, and so on. Now, analytics can be performed by three different approaches, like the parameter comparisons, uh, device comparisons, and pollution rules. In parameter comparison, you can have some correlations like temperature and humidity, or maybe particulate matter and the humidity. So such kind of analysis can be done. Whereas uh, in, in device comparisons, if you have a smart city or a campus and if you have installed multiple devices there, you can have that those comparison and understand how the whole air quality is dynamic across. A pollution rose is self-explanatory, just like a wind rose, there's a pollution rose which will help you out with knowing the wind directions as well as the level of pollution, uh, the level of pollution in terms of the AQI and will give you a holistic view of what is going around in, the, in your surrounding. Other features like uh, smart notification where uh, email or an SMS or push notifications can be generated using the thresholds set by the customer. Uh, there are automated reports. Now here, uh, the system generates scheduled reports on daily, weekly and monthly basis. All these reports are generated as per the regulatory standards. Environmental widget, which is an iframe based widget that can be integrated in any platform to publish the data on website or any portal. A pollution heat map. So this is just like we discussed when you have a certain number of devices in a fixed area. But we have the capability to generate these pollution heat maps using our environment here, where we can you know, correlate different kind of sources and we can track these sources and uh, superimpose over our data to help you understand the source tracking of the pollution. Also, in case if uh, the end user does not want our uh, cloud cloud-based application, there are other options which the data can be accessed. So we can provide APIs for integration with uh, the customer's application. Uh, the data can be published on uh, TVs or outdoor LEDs or mobile apps, something like that. Uh, one can also trigger the smart notifications uh, and the automat automated reports. Uh, we are also working on a voice activation. So the data accessibility, the, using this data, pollution data, one can conduct a research to establish correlation with coronavirus or, or one can develop any solution and application based on whatever this is, uh, whatever the data can be provided. So we believe in a closed loop system where we give the data and monitor the output. Let me just explain uh, with, the, uh, with the help of this graphic. The environmental data monitoring helps in data gathering, visualization and further analytics. Now there are two loops, as you can see, an urban and another one is an industrial. So in case of urban applications, uh, source prediction is carried out along with generating KPIs for different action forces to work upon. So once these KPIs are measured, we help measure the effect on pollution load and ultimately monitor the mitigation. 
I know there's a lot of uh, things to absorb. So let me just ease you out with an example. So air quality data is used by the city authorities and with advanced analytics and source tracking of possible emissions. The city authorities are empowered to further generate KPIs for departments, just like traffic or you know construction activities. They can monitor them, the fires. So these KPIs are measured and the effect of implementation on the environment is finally monitored by the data. So which then closes the loop for the urban applications. A similar such approach uh, is for the industrial applications where we focus on data enabling automation in industries. So threshold based automated and regulated, uh, regulated which eventually mitigate the problem. Example using the data and subsequent thresholds, industries can fix the frequency and direction by automatic mist scans for dust separation. Such efficient working of system create a positive impact and is eventually validated by our monitoring solution closing this loop. So this is what we believe in the closed loop system. So guys, we just wanted to give you a, uh, a spark or a kickstart and leave it up to your imagination to build solutions and applications. So we being a partner first company, we are committed to support you in the best possible way. In today's August gathering, although virtual, we have some brilliant minds amongst us and I'm sure they would already have started thinking in the direction to work towards a sustainable future. One which is prepared to tackle such untimely bio attacks and empower the mankind to rise through the ashes. Here I would love, uh, like you to just fill up the final poll for today. Please uh, spend some time and uh, help us understand your views on this. Thank you so much. With this, uh, we come to the conclusion of uh, today's main topic, the, the webinar on the correlation with uh, COVID-19 and sensor-based air monitoring systems, how they can help to indicate the spread of this virus. I hope you have got the context of today's discussion and I hope that this has led you to think about in this area and find some novel applications where uh, our solutions and offerings can be merged or even your thoughts can be help uh, to provide a robust solution for the authorities and the stakeholders. I thank uh, each one of you for your patience and your time. And I now hand over the stage to my colleague Janam. Janam, over to you. Thank you, Ayan, for the detailed presentation. And I also, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all our audience who stayed with us during this entire presentation. I'm certain this presentation has helped you at least scratch a part of your brain and think about how the impact of coronavirus is happening and how environment can could also play a very major role in spreading. With most of the cities and states having eased down the lockdown, I would just like to take this to remind you that cities and states have eased down on the lockdown, but coronavirus hasn't. So please take as many precautions as you can and step out only if necessary. If you are if you're in a profession where you can walk from home, we would advise you please do that and try to take as many precautions as you can. We would be more than happy to reconnect and engage with all of you. You can drop us an email or let's connect over a phone. I know most of you are either in touch with one of the account managers or someone from the team. So we'd be happy to reconnect and explore novel avenues. And thank you once again, everyone. And stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.